to report all systems are go. And the weather is good, you are cleared to finalize your descent to Mars. Roger that, ground control. We were getting impatient. Just a little more patience and you'll be the first man on Mars, Colonel. Make sure they spell my name right in the history books. 800 feet, landing gear extended. Easy on the descent, Captain. You've got a crosswind. Roger that, but turbulence won't stop us today. We're at 100 feet, beginning final descent protocols. We have contact. All systems green, we have landed. Repeat, we have landed. Congratulations, Colonel. Stand by for live broadcast. Rolling. Go ahead, Colonel. Today is no accident. It is the nature of the indomitable human spirit to persevere through great struggle. Here I, we, stand on the precipice of a new frontier. Let it be known as I am about to take the first steps for man on the red planet, that I do so for every man, woman, and child. Ground control. Ground control. I... I don't know what I'm looking at. Some portal just opened and a ship came out. Ground control. Do you have any reading on this? Uh, hello? Hello? Hi there! Uh, sorry to bother you, but we need directions. Is this Mars 10,000 BC? Uh, uh, it's Mars, but it, it's not 10,000 BC. See, I told you guys. Wait, I know that ship. That's the Scarlet Sunrise. Uh, are you Colonel Reginald Clark, the, the first modern man to walk on Mars? Uh, roger that, but I, I go by Reggie. Ugh, I was worried about this. Looks like my nav instruments got all messed up fighting our way through the shattering. We're not even close. Let me recalibrate. Wait, you said first modern man on Mars. I'm I'm the first man on Mars, right? <laughs> no, no. John and I have been dozens of times. Lovely this time of year. All right, guys, I think we're set. Recalibration complete. Let's boogie. All right, Jess, take us back into the portal. Thanks for your help. Have a good trip. Okay, bye! Colonel? Colonel? Reggie, do, do you read? What happened? The sensors went crazy and then we lost contact with you. What, what happened? What did you see? It was, uh, well... It was... Uh, uh, well... Well, it was... <laughs> Show, presented by WPNR and Radio City in New York. After a terrible deed that rocked the very foundations of the space-time continuum, five brave individuals, John, Alex, Jessica, Navy, and Arthur, travel through space and time to retrieve the one item that can restore balance to it all, a small pocket watch from the clutches of the dastardly evildoer, Victor. Now trapped in the 1940s with communication systems down, the team tells their story as a sci-fi radio adventure in the hopes of being rescued and saving the world. This is the Time Traveler's Radio Show. Today's adventure, Aries Rising. Are you worried you're going to repeat history because you haven't learned it? Today's episode is sponsored by John's History Tutoring. Now, on with the show. Right, we should actually be arriving on Mars 10,000 BC momentarily. Thank you, Navy. Boy, have we missed having you on board. Uh, I see Ruben's back to normal. Well, it's not surprising. So far, the damage from the shattering is localized to Earth. As long as we get outside the boundaries of the disaster, Ruben won't have the mind of Abraham Lincoln anymore. Oh, that's a shame. Thank goodness. So, why are we going to Mars again? Because it's where the Universal Time Records and Registry is located. Of course! Wait, what is that? Yeah, seriously though, are we actually just going to trust this guy now? Look, Victor and I have worked things out. Yeah, that's great for you, but why do we have to trust him? Because if you don't, the shattering will spread and all of reality will unravel. Guy's got ears like a fruit bat. There, see? The universe depends on us all working together. I don't... I don't know, John. He's... He is sitting in my chair. And he ate my chips last night. My 
ships. They had my name on them and everything. Morning, he actually they were so crude. Ride, ride, ride my ship. And ride my ship. That's not okay, Enough, daughter. guys. You're just going to have to trust me. Fine, but if he comes anywhere near my gummy bears, <laughs> watch out. A bit too late for that, my dear boy. <laughs> My gummies! Alex, you're being uncharacteristically quiet. What? Uh huh. Oh, I, I'm fine. Just thinking. Well, about what? About, uh, about Mars. How is going to Mars going to help us not get erased? I mean, it's just an empty, barren planet after all, right? Wait. Victor said it was a universal time records and registry. <gasps> so does that mean we're, like, going to a giant time library? Well... That's exactly what it means, Arthur. Yes! Time for my smart cookie. What? I save a smart cookie whenever I do something smart. It's my smart cookie. Like the one Victor is eating right now? Mm, delicious. <gasps> that fiend! So how can we get Victor into the airlock? We are not pushing Victor out the airlock. Hey, I'm with Arthur. I heard that. Oh, hear all you want! So there's a library on a dusty, barren old planet? John's never told you about the Fountains of Mars. Always another secret, I suppose. Fountains of Mars? Nothing is on Mars except... Portal opening in three, two, one. Except a hyper-advanced city with giant, beautiful fountains? And an exact scale replica of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon? Actually, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon are an exact scale replica of this place. Where are we? Prehistoric Mars, home of the archives of the UTRNR. The what? The Universal Time Records and Registry. Prehistoric Mars was lush, green, and full of life. The ancient Martians were kind enough to let us time travelers build a library here. Why did you never tell me about this place? Uh, uh, sorry, Alex. I, I meant to. I really did. We've always just been a little pressed for time. Ha! Good one. Pressed for time. Like a... Wow. It's been so long since we haven't had to crash land. Welcome, everyone, to Ares, the capital city of ancient Mars. Is someone knocking on the door? How polite! Usually people just try to knock it down. Uh, yes? Where is he? Where's he at? Uh -huh. uh, there he is. Come here, you wonderful little poultry, you. <laughs> no, no, they didn't. <laughs> uh, you understand Ruben? Of course. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, I'm just such a huge fan. Wait. Hooded figure, long beard, laughing. Dimitri! Dimitri! Put the chicken down and back away. Arthur, what are you doing? Don't be fooled, John. Dimitri appeared to us in the labyrinth pretending to be an old man, calling himself the Time Sage. He did what? Why, that little whippersnapper ought to bend him over my knee for that. Put your weapons away, everyone. Arthur, you too. All right, Reuben. If you say so. Everyone, this is the Time Sage. Wait, there actually is a Time Sage? Yes, maybe. The real McCoy, as they say. How do you know my name? I know your name, and Arthur, and Alex, and Jessica. I just finished archiving your escape from the Chicken Island. Quite an adventure you had. And how do you know what we just did? Because the Time Sage knows everything that has ever happened. Time travel can make history... complicated. The Time Sage records and archives time so that in the event of a disaster... We can have a reference to repair it. He stays here on early Mars, far from Earth history, so the records will be undisturbed. Good to see you, Timmy. Victor, I have gone by many names. The older I get, the more I collect. My name has passed the lips of civilizations long since dead and will pass the lips of those yet to be born. My name passes and transcends the great barriers of time itself. And never once have I gone with Timmy. <laughs> what? This is short for time, Sage. Then what is your name? There are some that call me Chuck. <laughs> oh, that's right. How could I forget? Chuck the Time Sage. I seem to recall a time in the past when others gave you a name you didn't like. Wasn't that right, Vicky? <laughs> Vicky. Vicky getting punished by the Time Sage? Sounds pretty serious. Yeah, you better watch out, Vicky. 
Or was it the future? I always get those two mixed up. <laughs> ah, good to see you again, John. Now, I haven't seen your father in a while. Well, Dad's no longer with us. Ah, still thinking linearly then, are we? Well, that's all right. Of course, you're here about to watch. He does know everything. I do. <laughs> or at least I know where to find it. Now, weary travelers, I invite you to an opportunity few within the twisting passages of time have been afforded. We're listening. I invite you to peruse my records. Uh, your, your records? Yes. The library I maintain is yours to enjoy. Of course, this excludes any material on your future endeavors. Of course. This means any event in the past up to your present is yours to investigate. I only ask you avoid section D-47 of the library. It's, uh, off limits. All of your records? Like, all of them? This is, wow, this is so much. I, I want to look up the Napoleonic Wars. I want to look up the trade history of the Silk Road. I want to finally figure out definitively what happened to Elvis. Oh, where to start? Um, maybe we could start with a deep breath. Not a chance. We are burning daylight here, people. Let's go. John, wait. Victor and I need to discuss the whereabouts of Henry's pocket watch. What are you pointing at? Holy cow, is that a giant statue of Grandpa? Yeah, he's a bit of a celebrity here since he created time travel. They made a statue of him? And a big one, too, complete with pocket watch. Let's go, John. Hopefully we can get what we need quickly. We wouldn't want the council to get involved. Be right there, Vicky. Ugh. Hey, John, will you be all right? I know you say you're good with Victor now, but Dimitri did disguise himself as the Time Sage. Are, are we sure I'll we can I'll be fine, Navy. I've known Chuck since I was a kid. You guys go. I'll call everyone on the comms when we're ready to meet. Should be done around noon, Mars time. But I... Go. We don't know how long we have until the shattering reaches Mars. We've got to hurry. There's also research waiting. Well, <laughs> when you put it that way... <laughs> and remember, stay away from your own futures... No spoilers, as they say. I'm looking at you, Navy. Dang it! Wow, this place is way bigger than I imagined. And I can imagine a really big place. <gasps> and they have TVs, too. Those aren't TVs, Arthur. I think those are holographic access terminals for the records. But come on, everybody else is already ahead. Right, sorry. It, it was super nice of you to stay back and help me with the ship. Oh, it's fine. I uh, just needed to clear my head with some manual labor. Man, there is so much information here. Ooh, what should I look up first? Ooh, maybe a nice hyperdrive manual. Whoa, the last manual I read started talking to me, so I don't know about that. You were right, Jessica. Yeah, yeah, uh, just a little distracted. I'm going to walk around and see if I can find a librarian. Okay, well, calm me if you need anything. Oh, and Arthur, don't get lost. <laughs> Remember the Library of Alexandria? Right, no candles. No, well, well yes, but just don't get lost. Okay. All right, Mr. Computer, where can I learn about the history of the jelly bean? Down the hall, 35 quarters to the right, then 49 flights up. Aha. Uh -huh. Ruben, are you getting this? He's totally going to get lost. <laughs> ah, dang it! How can all of the files be corrupted? Alex? This can't be. How can it be missing if this is all of history? You said that... Come down. It's as I suspected. Uh, try... Alex! What? Oh, oh. oh! It's just you, Chess. Sorry, you, you startled me. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Just, uh, just looking at history. You know, the, the unquenchable human thirst for, uh, knowledge. Right? All right, weirdo. You want some help? Uh, what? No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm fine. You should just look up flying uh, stuff. Flying stuff? Uh, yeah, you know, like, uh, pilot things. Okay. You're acting super weird. What? Me? <laughs> no, I'm not. But we've barely talked since the island. You don't seem like yourself. Uh, not myself? <laughs> nah. No, I'm fine. I... Alex, Alex, it's me. You can tell me. Why won't you open up? It's nothing. 
What were you talking to Victor about? Victor? Well, just now. And last night. What's going on? Just uh, talking about how to fix things. You and your dad are so much alike. We are not. Oh, sorry. That, that, that was a bit loud. I, I mean, <laughs> you try to do the hard stuff alone. It, it's just... It's just... With the shattering and the whitewash, I just... Do you ever wish we could live normal lives? What, like not be time travelers? Uh, no, I like what we do. I, I just I just wish the universe wasn't always about to explode, you know? It really has been one thing after another, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And don't get me wrong, it's been fun. But sometimes I wonder, will there ever not be a crisis? Someone getting hurt because of all of this. What are you referring to? Nothing. Are you sure I can't help you? Thanks, but I think I need to look through some things on my own for a bit. To clear my head. I get that. Okay, clear away. Just calm me if you need something, okay? Okay. Thanks. <sighs> Alex. All right, Ruben. I, I know we told Jessica we wouldn't get lost, and I'm not saying we're lost, but I definitely don't know where we are. This is fine. This is nothing like the Library of Alexandria. They're, they're, these are holograms. Can't light those on fire. <laughs> Let's see. There's a sign right there. Wing D-47? Wasn't I supposed to remember something about D-47? Were we supposed to go in or... <laughs> Arthur? <laughs> Maybe you should sneak up on us like that. Sorry, this is just all so exciting. I... Are you lost? What? No. Arthur? Oh, I am totally lost. How could you tell? You were about to enter the forbidden section. Aha! I knew D-47 was important. What do you think's in it? I don't know. It is curious it's off limits. Ooh, maybe it's like some deep forbidden knowledge or, or our futures. Our futures, huh? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to look over. Wait, wait, yeah, uh, you're not the least bit interested to know your future? Sure I'm interested, but I don't want to ruin the surprise, like meeting this guy. <laughs> and where's the fun if you're never surprised? Arthur, that's like, kind of wise. <laughs> uh, is there uh, any, any, anything you're looking forward to, or someone you're looking forward to, or... <gasps> Like another Reuben? No, no, I meant more like someone you really want to spend time with. Wow, two Reubens. But then I would have to keep them straight somehow. Reuben one and Reuben two? No, Arthur, not chickens. I mean, more like people. Do you, do you uh, see yourself pursuing anybody? Oh, I get it. Wait, you do? Well, if Victor betrays us, we'll have to pursue him, right? <laughs> You didn't remotely get what I was asking. <laughs> then what are you asking? I'm asking. Well, well, Jessica's Alex, and even John had someone. Don't you? Don't you wish you had someone too? Oh, now I get what you're asking. And what am I asking? You want to go on a date with someone? Hmm. I did hear that Genghis Khan was trying to meet someone. Maybe I can ask. <laughs> Maybe. Why didn't you just slap your head? <laughs> There's a big red mark where... No reason, just just super excited to get set up with Genghis Khan. <laughs> well, we'll have to keep it on the down low. I mean, John would be all, time travel is not for dating, but, but your secret is safe with me. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry, baby. I mean, you were like the smartest and nicest person I know. And cute, too. You deserve the best. Wow, Arthur, I... <laughs> hmm. I didn't know you thought so highly of me. <laughs> I mean, I used to feel super lonely, too, until I met Ruben. Isn't that right? Am I getting upstaged by a chicken? <laughs> Arthur, do you ever wish you had someone besides Ruben, like, like a person? What are you talking about? I have you. Me? You, you have, I, 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 what? Yeah, you're, you're awesome. Wait. Reuben, where are you going? Ah! Wait, Reuben, that's the forbidden area. Oh, shoot. I have to find him. Arthur, wait. I, ah, how am I even more confused than I was before? Reuben.
Reuben? Reuben! Oh, where'd you go? We're not supposed to be here. It's the forbidden area. Reuben, come back. Oh, there you are. What a good chicken you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you... Wait. Do you hear frogs? In a library? Boy, it's pitch black in here. Now, if only I could find the light switch. Aha, there, much better. Hey, a person, hi, person. <laughs> Wait, aren't you? Oh, no, I... Oh. <laughs> about this, Navy. Oh, come on, we have to. Remember my hypothesis. All the paperwork is handled and nobody, I repeat, nobody can get offended by this product. And it's not dangerous. Yeah, but will anyone buy it? Oh, no, of course not. That's the genius of my plan. She does have a point, John. And I'll try not and take that personally. Just think of it this way. You finally get a spotlight for your passion. You're really boring passion. Thank you, everyone. Your support is paramount. I think I just heard a yes. All right, places, people. Eddie, you know what to do. Yep. And now it's time for a brief word from our sponsor, John's History Tutoring. Yay! Are you failing your history class? Can you not tell your Ming Dynasty from your Han? Are you worried because you haven't learned from history and that you're doomed to repeat it? If so, never fear, because John's History Tutoring is here to say... No, no more! Oh, a little more enthusiasm would be nice. <laughs> anyway, here at John's History Tutoring, we put the fun back in history by providing an instructor who has seen history happen firsthand. Don't believe us? Just listen to these reviews from some very satisfied customers. Ever since I started using John's history tutoring, I don't even need my history book anymore. Yay! <laughs> Ever since I started using John's history tutoring, I am a history whiz. I might even know more than my dad now. Alex! What? We're time travelers. We don't need history. We can just watch it happen. Listen, I have a PhD and I'm going to use it. <laughs> Ever since I started using John's tutoring service, my grade has increased by 70%. I can honestly say that it has changed my life academically. Hey, we've almost made it all the way through an entire commercial. That's a first this season. Shh, don't jinx it. Yeah, let's stick the landing. Arthur, say your line. Oh, right. Ooh, now what was it again? Shoot, I thought I was memorized. Memorized? This is this is radio. Just read your line. You have a script right there. Oh, I know. I just thought it would be more fun to memorize. Just say it. We've almost finished without a... Stop! Everyone, stop. This ends here and now. Aha! I knew it. My hypothesis was correct. Something fishy is going on around here. What does the FTC have against history tutoring? The FTC? Nothing. Your station owner, however. Hello. Victor. Victor! My, it has been a while, hasn't it? Good to see you all. You're the station owner. This makes perfect sense. That's why everything has gotten rejected. This is why the heat was turned up and my wonderful device was confiscated. Nonsense, Navy. We pulled that device because it was obviously very dangerous. Yeah, well, what about John's tutoring? Th that's not dangerous. Oh, I disagree. History can be very dangerous. Just look where it's gotten you all. <laughs> no, I, I think this program could use a fresh take on advertising, one that I shall be overseeing personally from now on. Yeah? Well, I can still tutor, and you can't stop me. Knowledge is power. Oh, I don't think so. Hastings, please take his PhD. I'll just be taking that. No! My doctorate! You carry that around? All right, back to work, my busy beavers. Next week, we'll return with a commercial of my choosing. And now, back to our feature presentation this evening on WPNR, The Time Traveler's Radio Show, Episode 11, Aries Rising. I'm sorry, Chuck, what did you say? I don't make the records, I only keep them. 
I didn't say the task wouldn't be arduous. Hmm. This would account for how quickly the shattering has spread, but John. We only have two weeks before the whitewash. If anyone can do it, it's you and your crew. Yeah, I don't see the problem. We're time travelers. We have all the time in the world we need to complete the task and then pop out a portal right before the deadline. You couldn't get that trick past my dad with your homework, Victor. You really think you could fool Balthazar? Wait, uh, Henry knew? Of course. Uh, and he never said anything. He was impressed by the complex time calculation you made to get another couple hours on your physics homework. Hmm. I'm afraid John is right, Victor. And time is of the essence. We're at a tipping point, boys. You know what you need to do, and now you need to do it. A tipping point. All right, then. I think it's time for us to gather the crew. Hey, guys, it's time. Meet at the council room immediately. We might be a little late. Why? <laughs> something spooked Reuben. We are trying to calm him down. Just put him on the ship or something. We don't have time. Got to that. Over and out. I must prepare for the meeting as well. Just so you know, I have alerted the council. You did? That wasn't necessary. It was protocol, Victor. You initiated a potential whitewash that would erase the library. Everything you see here is a direct result of Henry creating time travel. How could the council not get involved? Not to worry. They don't hold any actual power over us. They'll just try and be intimidating. Either way, I'd have a plan to present them if I were you. I shall return. And speaking of my dad, you were certain that these were his last known coordinates? That I know of, yes. You'll have a devil of a time talking him into helping with this. But there you go. Well, John, do we have a plan? I... I don't know. I might be out of my depth on this one. What? You are always out of your depth. Why get nervous about it now? I'm serious. So am I. Victor... Our task just tripled. The threat of a whitewash is looming over us, and the shattering is getting closer and closer to us every second. And on top of all this, this is a tipping point, too? John, do you remember the first time your father took us here? What does that have to do with anything? Do you? Yes. We got in trouble for playing in the fountains. Yes, we did. What's your point? We've always just been boys out of our depth. We've been given time travel as an awesome tool. I spent years planning, thinking how to use it, but yet you stayed ahead of me. And you were never planning, just playing. So, what are you saying? I'm saying let me plan. You can do the improvising. Together we'll make it through. Oh, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. They're holograph projectors, just like in the main library. Sometimes events from history are projected here for meetings and fill the entire room. It's really cool. All right, let's get started. Everyone will need to leave all electronic devices outside this room, please. All comms, scanners, etc. Wait, why? Yeah, why? Some of the equipment has been acting up recently. We want to avoid any interference. So if you please... Thank you now. Let's get started. Wait, we're starting? What about the council? And we're missing people from my team. Oh, so we are. Where's Reuben? Well, Reuben's on the ship. Where is Arthur, then? Lost. Lost. And Alex? Oh, we don't know. He hasn't been answering his comm. Their absence is regrettable, but trust me, John, we must proceed, and quickly. What about the council? Wait, who's the council? The Grand Council of the Time Records and Registration Archive. Just a bunch of stuffy time travelers in dumb robes. They help manage the library and have taken it upon themselves to get into everybody's business. Can't we wait a couple minutes for Alex and Arthur? There isn't time. We will have to find them later. Perhaps one of you can take notes. Well, I mean, I'm already doing that. <laughs> well, let us begin. John, would you care to tell your team what you discovered in the archives? Absolutely. <sighs> when Dimitri broke the watch, time was shattered. Yeah, we know that. And in order to fix it, we're going to have to repair the watch. 
Okay, not so bad. The only problem is the watch no longer exists. Wait, what? But you just said we have to repair it. As you may well be aware, Henry's pocket watch was no ordinary watch. Due to its involvement in the history of time travel, more time energy was associated with that timepiece than any, any other object in history. But when Dimitri's hammer compromised its structural integrity, the watch energy was released, vaporizing the physical casing. The resulting temporal paradox shattered an already weak space-time continuum and blasted you all to the four corners of reality. You see, the watch was a linchpin in the fabric of space-time. Remove it from the timeline and reality gets shaky. Remove it from existence entirely. Boom! The shattering. So what do we do? You just said we need to repair the watch, but we can't because it doesn't exist. Oh, we didn't say that. The physical watch may be gone, but its time energy persists. Time energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. The watch energy still exists. Reunited in the right way, and the watch will be restored as well. Well, where is it? Oh, that's just the thing. At the shattering, the energy split three ways and was absorbed by three different objects, or people, across time. Three? It took us forever just to track down one watch. Now we have two weeks to find three? Exactly. And not necessarily a watch. The energy could be in anything or anyone. And due to the shattering, scanning is going to be difficult. We can navigate towards the general energy signatures, but we won't know when or where we'll be until we get there. Okay, so we get these three objects or people and we just put them in a room together? It's uh, a bit more complicated than that. They need to be brought together in the vortex at a nexus point. That's way dangerous, though. One wrong move and we could have another Frank situation. Well, he's actually remarkably well-adjusted, all things considered. Uh, <laughs> but agreed, quite dangerous. And that's not all. This whole thing is a tipping point. Uh-oh. What's a tipping point? That's a phrase my dad coined. It's supposed to be theoretical, but it's real. A tipping point means when reality hinges on a single event. Currently, everything is in flux and has been since Victor stole the watch. The future is undetermined, and either outcome is coexisting together in harmony. It's Schrodinger's worst nightmare. That being said, one wrong move and reality becomes fixed. And there's no way of changing it. So, whitewashes, tipping points, no pressure. Well, let's get back to the ship then. I can adjust the sensors to search for the time energy coming off the fragments. Wait, and we... Navy, just wait. Set a spell, would you? Just set a spell. Chuck. I think Navy's right. Now that we have our marching orders, we need to make immediate Just plans to- wait! The council is still on their way. Chuck, what's going on? Alex, there you are. Where have you been? Can you explain this? You've removed your record from our registry. That's not allowed. It's a comprehensive compilation of my mother's timeline from birth to death, and it's blank. And you know what? It doesn't end when I was a baby like you've always said. It ends two weeks before Victor stole the watch. So I'm going to ask you this again, Dad. Can you explain this? Son. <laughs> Access denied. Doors locked. <laughs> Access denied. Doors locked. <laughs> Access denied. Doors locked. <laughs> Warning. Temporal destabilization event imminent. Shattering imminent. Ten minutes until arrival on Mars. <laughs> Manual override access denied. <laughs> Language settings accessed. <laughs> Language parameters set to poultry. <laughs> Voice key accepted. Voice piloting controls activated. <laughs> So 
Son, please, you do not understand what you're asking. We can talk about this, but not here. Oh, no. We're going to talk about it here and now. Let's go to the videotape. Young man, this is a council meeting. You can't just... Can it, Timmy? Nice. Ready, sweetheart? Ready. Okay. Power flowing in three, two... And that's how it ends. It's like Mama is, is a ghost. There, but but not there. So I'm going to ask you again. What actually happened to my mother? Son, we could talk about this later, but you've been lying to me. And Victor, Victor was the only one to tell me the truth. Alex, you don't know the pain this has caused me. What was that? It's the shattering. It's here. What? How could we have missed that? We missed it because our comms and scanners were confiscated before we entered this room. Timmy, do you have something you'd like to tell us? Nothing. It's just that I'm... very sorry, Vicky. Come on, everyone. We have to go. I'm sorry because I cannot let you leave. I'm sorry, what did you say, Chuck? I'm sorry, old friend. I could not let you leave. I knew it! I knew we couldn't trust this guy. To find these weapons have very little effect on me. Why, Chuck? Why? Because, because they won't let me let you leave. I, I have no choice. Who won't? <laughs> Guess who? Balthazar! Oh, man! <laughs> Oh, you should have seen the looks on your faces. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't be there in person. But Chuck, baby, world-class performance. You deserve a raise. Oh, wait. We don't pay you. <laughs> You're our slave. <laughs> Chuck, explain. They made me. They came here, took over the library, managed the council, and, and, and told me they would destroy it if I didn't keep you here. <laughs> It's my life's work, John. But Chuck, the library itself will get erased if you do this. Oh, we made a deal with old Chucky Poo here to spare the library. But you, on the other hand... Oh, you've got a giant wave of raw temporal energy careening towards you. The shattering, baby! If the impact doesn't kill you, it'll for sure do something weird. Just like those Franks. Hey, either way, you'll be stuck here and I'll be assured my whitewash. <laughs> Those were not the terms of our arrangement. Yeah, we had a deal. You said you'd let us try and save time. Oh, we let you try and save time. That was for sure part of our agreement, but we only agreed not to harm you on Chicken Island. Everything else is free game, baby. <laughs> Why didn't you just kill us on the island when you had a chance? Why make a deal? It's the non-intervention pact. The what? It's a part of becoming a time walker. You agree not to interfere with time directly. It's very binding. Indirectly, however, is another matter. Us failing to keep up our end of the bargain is the only excuse they need. It's all about the loopholes, baby. But why? Why do you want to erase us? Because I don't like you. Henry should never have been allowed to time travel. I made a mistake. But then Vicky, oh, Vicky suggested a whitewash. Oh, well, now that's the good stuff. That's only if we still fail. And you forget, we, we still have our secret weapon. Oh, yeah? What's that? Uh, Arthur is still out there somewhere. Uh, maybe Arthur is our secret weapon? Oh, uh, speaking of Arthur... Let's go live to Section D-47 of the Magic Time Library. It's Arthur in captivity! Ah, oh, guys, no! Arthur! So much for our secret weapon. This little stinker almost blew our cover by wandering into the one section he was told not to go in. Luckily, Pierre was there. Bonsoir. Pierre, what are you doing here? We had to leave someone behind to make sure Timmy stayed in line. Why do you think D-47 was off limits? Pierre needed a place to put his frogs. Man's got a lot of frogs, you know. 
<laughs> creepy three bit goes a frog. Open up. Oh no, please get that away from me. <laughs> Quite a plan you dreamed up here, Balthazar. Oh, it wasn't me. It was these lovely ladies. Oh, hello. All right, Alex. The Marissas have generations of experience with Farnsworth men. Who better? Sorry I couldn't be there, John, to see you in person. I thought it might be too painful, given our history, for you to see me again. I might enjoy far too much seeing you flail in agony as you grow an extra head. Is that you, Marissa? I didn't recognize you without the sulfur and cloven hooves. Um, wow, salty. Alex, it still don't have to be this way. I, I, I talked to them and, and you could come with us. Oh, yeah, kid, you're all right in our book. You're good at snooping around. I like that. Do you say, Alex? It could be just you and me, just like old times. Oh, yes. What do you think about that, John? No, absolutely not. He's old enough to decide on his own. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I am not going with you. Mares, we've talked about this. You can come with us and be free. Mares is not going anywhere, isn't that right? Yeah, of course not. See, the thing is, your father's a lot of ability, Alex. Tell me his time limit meddling hasn't armed you either, and I'll, I'll come with you. <laughs> Just like I thought. You can still come with us, though. But... I, uh... Alex? You can't possibly be considering this. Look, I just found out that my dad's been lying to me about my mother's death. I don't know what to think anymore. And time's up anyway. 30 more seconds. Balthazar. Any last words? Balthazar. What? What could you possibly want right now? There is a, a, a tapping on my door. I uh, thought you said you were alone here. What? Oh, it is a uh, little, how you say, uh, a chicken. <laughs> what? Oh, oh little, uh, oh, Oh, oh. <laughs> anyway, sayonara, suckers! Stop! Wait, who are you? Mom? Robin! Oh, my. I knew it. I only have a moment. The shattering is opening a rift. I can hold it all off for a moment, but not for long. Go! Run! But, Mom, where are you? What is happening? I... Ow! Oh, my head. Son, let's go. Now! Chuck? I'm sorry, my friend. Please forgive me on what I've done. Go. I will deal with the time walkers and this angry, glowing woman who appeared on the time rift. Oh, uh, that would be the missus. Thank you, Chuck. Oh, cheese and crackers! You two, get over there and fix this! Now! Yes, yes your, your grace. grace. Who brought the time ship this close to the library? Doesn't matter. Strap in, everybody. We've got to go. Now! Ow! My head! What was that? Son, not now. No! I deserve to know. He's right, John. I can't explain everything here and now, but no, your mom isn't dead. She's not technically alive, either. She was ripped from the timeline and obliterated. It's as if she never existed. She suffered a fate worse than death. Because of me. She's trapped between existing and not. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you try and bring her back? It's too complicated, son. She doesn't technically exist. Only Victor and I could remember. It was painful. We can't use time travel for personal gain and... Excuse me. But... Let him go. Hi, guys. Arthur! Arthur! Oh, I'm so glad you're all right. How'd you escape? Reuben went total magic chicken on that time walker guy and... Whoa. There is a super weird vibe in here right now. We may or may not have just discovered that Alex's mom is trapped between realities and doesn't technically exist, but her ghost is still floating around out there somewhere, and John has been lying about it. Huh. Okay. You, Zod! We locked up a word with you, Lot! That is most definitely a trap. John, you can't avoid the past, John. 
We have you surrounded. Why don't you just come out and talk with me? I can't handle this right now. Wait, John? Let him go. They both need time. Oh, is that Vicky I hear? Vicky! Well, what are you waiting for? Get us out of here. Yes, we're surrounded. All right, boys. Fire away. Stay away from them. Ah! Fire at her! Fire at her! Well, there's your cue. Thank you, Robin. Where are we going, Navy? It looks vaguely early modern Britishy, I think. As much as I enjoy just sitting here and waiting for certain annihilation, are you planning on punching it, as John is so fond of saying? Oh, this is definitely going to get some taking used to. Oi, and Jesse, let me know if you're having trouble keeping an eye on Alex. He opened up to me like no one before, I think. All right, you lot, stop, stop. They're gone, aren't they? <sighs> this is most displeasing. What are we going to do? Status report, madam. They have unfortunately gotten away. Look, it wasn't our fault when that great big glowing lady popped hey, in. Hey, hey, cool it, gang. It's all right. It's only half time. We just have to shift to plan B. What's plan B? A race. We just have to get to those anomalies before they do. Uh, can I trust you ladies to head John and Alex off at the first one? Oh, yes. You can count on us. That was the Time Travelers Radio Show, Episode 11, Aries Rising. The Time Travelers Radio Show is a special production by WPNR at Radio City in New York and was recorded in front of a fake studio audience. A special thanks to our sponsor, John's History Tutoring. Make sure to tune in next week for Episode 12, once more unto the breach. The Time Travelers Radio Show was created by Cody Cutler and Jacob Ernest. This episode was written by Jacob Baird and Cody Cutler and produced and directed by Jacob Ernest. It starred W. Benjamin Hyde as John, Adam Packard as Alex, Kelly Cook as Jessica and Ruben, Darcy Ramirez as Navy, Chris Rollins as Arthur, and Dane Allred as Victor. It also starred Frank Koenig as the Time Sage, Jeff Simpson as Balthazar, Julie Dowd as Marissa, Undine Morgan Gardner as Mares, Lorianne Paulson as Robin, Jacob Ernest as Colonel Reggie Clark and Computer Voice, and Dane Allred as Ground Control. The production sound mixer was Kayla Santos. Sound design was by Cody Cutler and music by Richard Williams and Jerem Hansen. The executive producer was Cody Cutler, with a special thanks to the Hive Collaborative in Provo, Utah, Kyle Clausen, and associate producer Ron Bateman. Follow the Time Travelers Radio Show on Instagram and Twitter, or like us on Facebook. Stay up to date with everything Time Traveler related over at www.timetravelersradio.com. Thank you for listening, and as always, see you next time. Bark, bark.